What's up guys, Kenan here from Marshall Golden Motor Sales and today I'm taking you on a quest of BMW nerddom. Now I am a huge BMW fan I figure this is something that most people haven't seen before. So we're going to talk today about the BMW Z8. But we're not really going to talk about the car, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that comes with it. Namely, the coffee table book that comes with this car. When you're buying a Z8, you should make sure it comes with all sorts of things. You want to make sure it has the original hardtop, hardtop stand, books, keys, that sort of thing. One thing that is really cool that was specific to the Z8 is this book. So we're going to take a closer look at it and we're going to dive right in and see what kind of BMW nerdy goodness came with the Z8. Okay, so before you even open the book, you can tell this comes from BMW's understated period of time. The box is just black. There's nothing really specific on it. The only hint that it's anything special is that it says Z8 on um, a gloss emboss on the cover. But when you lift up the cover, you are presented with the leather bound cover for uh, for the book itself. As you can see, the Z8 logo is embossed on top of it. Now, this is a really nice piece of BMW Napa leather, which is the kind of hide that they used on uh, luxury BMWs at the time. Um, but you open it up and there is the VIN sticker. So this book is specific to each car. Um, and what I mean by that is the sticker itself has your VIN on it the, and the build date of the car for your Z8. Um, which is one of the unique things that uh, BMW decided to do, one of the nice touches they put on it. When you open the book initially too, you're also greeted by a photo of your car as it uh, left the assembly line. This would have been the final detail that BMW would have gone through before the car was sent out from Ding Golfing. Um, it's just a cool example. This particular car is a black on black car. And there it was back in 2002. Um, so let's go ahead and take the book out of the box and we'll take a closer look at some really cool details and some cool content that's found inside. Now that you've removed the book from the box, if you lift up the leather, you can actually see that it has the BMW Z8 logo, which is found um, behind the driver's seat, driver and passenger seat. This is the same aluminum logo that's in the car. You can feel it because it's nice and cold and it's really cold in Ohio, so you can tell if it's made of metal. Um, but it's another cool touch found inside the box. Let's get to the book. The first thing you're greeted with when you open the book is BMW's graphic section. So these are all just amazing high quality photos BMW took of the Z8 at the time. They really don't do stuff like this anymore. Um, the, back in the early 2000s, BMW was on fire um, and they were making just some incredible content to go with their cars. And they recognized that the Z8 was a very special car. So there are tons of really cool pictures um, of this car. Before we dive into the technical stuff, you can appreciate the design, which obviously with the Z8 was the most important part of BMW's marketing for this machine. The first part of the Z8 story is all about design. Again, with the Z8, BMW paid homage to the 507 convertible. Um, and this first section of the story just talks about why they made the design changes and, uh, and how they paid homage to that car in particular with certain design language. Um, it's a really fascinating story to read because this car was so niche um, and so particular at the time and just really unusual. Um, and again, the photography continues to be beautiful. Um, Justin and I were just talking about a lot of this was largely shot probably on film as opposed to digital. Um, and again, just like the car itself marks the end of the analog year before switching to digital. But really cool stuff in here. Um, and again, Again, if you're a design freak like I am, um, it's cool to read about um, how the Z8 came to be. The next section of this book is all about engineering, and specifically the glorious S62 V8 that's housed in the Z8. Now, I own a 2002 E39 M5, and I'm a huge fan of those cars, so I'm very familiar with this power unit. Um, so to look through this is just, um, well, it's really exciting to me. Um, this lithograph cutaway of the engine is really cool. Um, and then just photos of the heads. Um, we'll do some B-roll of this just so you can see everything about the engine. Um, they do give a lot of technical details and sort of talk about the history of the S62 and how it was developed um, jointly for the E39 M5 and then the Z8 as well. Um, I always thought that it was developed specifically for the M5 um, and that it just happened to end up in the Z8 because they needed a V8 just like the 507 had. But it turns out that it was actually developed with the Z8 in mind. Um, which, uh, which is interesting because, of course, the Alpina that came later used a different engine altogether. Um, but really fascinating stuff, very cool to flip through all the technical details of, uh, of this amazing V8. The next section of the book talks about suspension geometry design. So this is really just talking about the front and rear axles and how BMW went about choosing their setup for this car. It's a relatively short section compared to the engine, um, but it is interesting nonetheless to look and see exactly what BMW is trying to do with the Z8. In the next section, you'll find BMW talking about their testing of the car. 
Um, this would involve a whole number of things, wind tunnel testing, and uh, but also testing it on track, like at the Nuremberg, um, which it's really cool to see their Nuremberg time uh, end up in the book. Um, but this is just a fascinating section to read about, and, you know, again, how they were um, experimenting with dynamics, um, looking at acoustics and engineering and how the car should sound, um, in addition to um, how the car should drive and handle. For this next portion of the book, BMW decided to talk about the 507, but you can't really get around talking about the 507 when the car is an homage to that car to begin with. It talks about the concept of the car, how it came after World War II, how BMW had to rebuild and come up with a flagship car, just like Mercedes did with the 300 SL. BMW placed all their bets on the 507, and this section tells the whole story of the car um, and where the Z8 can trace its roots to. BMW moves on from this point to talk about production of the car. So um, as the car went through its various stages of interior assembly, engine assembly, and of course the creation of the aluminum body, um, BMW made sure to detail every portion of the process, which is really fantastic. Um, and you know, it just further attests that this was an era when BMW really put quality above everything else and these cars were so over-engineered um, and so well put together and that translates into how nice Z8s are today. Um, but this section is really cool, especially as you get to see the guts of the car really come together. So this section towards the end of this chapter is really cool. Uh, I thought it was funny to see them do the water um, tightness testing, um, where they just drench the car for a long period of time to see if any water got in. And then final packaging before they sent the car off. I thought it was really funny in the bottom two pictures on this page, you can see that they heat shrunk um, the protective coating around the exhaust. So it was extra as tight as it could be to make sure no dirt got in the car, but that when the car is being moved, it could breathe. Uh, this, that typical German attention to detail. Gotta love it. The last section of this book talks about driving impressions. And at the end of the day, BMW is supposed to be the ultimate driving machine. Um, and that's further hit home by this short review of the Z8 and what it was like to drive. Um, as you can imagine, they talk a lot about the engine's responsiveness. This was the first time BMW used uh, um, throttle by wire as opposed to throttle by cable. So that was a huge deal, and that's mentioned a couple of times. Um, but it's just really cool to see a Z8 out and being used. Um, and that's how BMW decided to end this book, uh, encouraging people to go out and drive their cars. Now, if you're in the market for a Z8, of course, we're no strangers to them here. Um, so be sure to check out uh, all of the further details on this car on our website. Um, and I hope you enjoyed taking a look around this piece of BMW history. Um, again, as always, if you like any other BMWs, be sure to keep an eye on all of our BMWs on MarshallGoldman.com. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.